Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com and in this tutorial we're going to look at an example of using the observer pattern and we're going to go on in, in the next tutorial to implementing everything ourselves but we're just going to use a kind of pre-made class in this tutorial. Now I've got the code here that's just a copy of the model view controller code that we started putting together and to turn that into a actual program that actually runs and produces a window while the previous version ran it just didn't do anything whatsoever but to turn it into a program that has a window we only have to add three lines and I'm not going to go into swing in these tutorials and I do have a separate tutorial um, series on that but the three lines are just to set the size set what happens when you click the button in the corner across in windows and uh, I think it's a red button in the map, I'm not sure, and you have to set it to visible and then you end up with a window like this. So with three lines we've turned our model view controller example code into uh, kind of a, a program that doesn't actually do anything but it's, uh, it's a good start. Now I've also, um, I, I want to actually add in this tutorial a button to the code and show you how to respond to events using the observer pattern with a button as an example of the observer pattern in action and to, to actually put a button on a in a window in swing is not completely trivial and uh, what I've done is I've, I've set the layout manager which controls where, the con where things will be actually positioned within the main window to this notorious grid bug layout which again I go through in my swing tutorial but I won't dwell on it here but the idea is you set you tell the window what layout manager to use and the layout manager um, just figures out where to put your controls and then you fill in a sort of form that says uh, this is where I want my controls my next control to go I want it at this position I want it to resize in this way and so on and so you fill out this kind of form and then finally you use a method called add and you pass the control that you want to add to your window along with the fill, filled out completed form that says where that control should go. And none of that is relevant to the observer pattern so don't worry about it too much but I'm going to go here and create a I'm going to create a J button to use as an example so let's give this a private instance variable of the type J button. Uh, so J button let's call it hello button and it's a good idea to give your objects, um, your variables and your classes names that reflect what they do. So I'm calling this hello button because it's a button. Let's um, spell that correctly. And then I need to create, this is just a reference to a button and I need to create a button object somewhere. So let's do that, do that down here. Um, actually let's not, let's do it maybe up here. This, is, this can be like an area of the program where we create objects. So I'll say hello button equals new J button. So I'm using this built in class in Java. And J button actually takes a string that lets you put text on it. So I'm going to say here, click me, click me. Now I want, I'm going to add that to the, to the main window by just saying add hello button. And then I pass in this form that I've filled out with details of where I want the button to appear and now if I run this I've got um, in the center of the screen this button. Now you see that um, this this window I can drag it around so the, the stuff happening here the program is is doing something other than simply running this button and uh, what we want to happen is when we click the button we want some part of the rest of the program to notice we want to be able to specify some code that is run when we click that button and this is what we use the observer pattern for and to do that we um, we need to pass the button a object that implements a particular interface now I, I quite like to work backwards here actually because I find that's a good way to remember this and whether it's the, the best way to understand this I'm not sure but we'll give this a go and hopefully it'll be good so 
we say hello button, we, we take the hello button. So we're going to start with the button because it's the button. The button is our subject. It's the, it's the object in which the thing occurs, the event occurs that we want to respond to. So we're going to start with the button. And we say in the case of um, button, in the case of J button, add action listener. So in the observer pattern, you're going to, your subject, the object that is the subject, in which something happens is going to have usually a method called set something or other or add something or other and add implies that you can have a list of things and set implies that you can only have one and when I say things I mean observers or listeners so here we can have a list of a list of um, listeners or observers that uh, are responding to things that happen in this button so we call add action listener and notice that Add action listener takes a object of type action listener. Now, in fact, action listener is is actually an interface. So, what this is saying is that hello button takes an object that implements the action listener interface. So, let's call add action listener there. And now we need to supply something that implements action listener. And we don't have anything at the moment. So, I'm going to show you. Uh, two possible solutions to that in this tutorial. One solution is, well, we've got this mainframe class here. We can make that implement action listener. So we say class view extends J frame. Let's say implements action listener. Now, what is action listener? It, it's actually just, all it does is, if we look at it, let's put the cursor on it and hit F3. And we see that it's just got one method. So if you implement action listener, what that means is that you've got to have an action perform method in your object. And that's where we're going to put the code for J button to run. This is, a, this is all just a way of feeding some code to J button for it to run when you click it. So having said implements action listener, now we've got an error and we click on the error and go to add unimplemented methods. Or you could just do this by hand. And what we get is this action perform method in our um, class that implements action listener. And because we've got that method, we can now pass a reference to the object, the view object that we've got here, because elsewhere in the program, we do new view. So there is, a, there is an object. If we look at application here, we're doing new view. So there's a view object. And how do we get a reference to the view object when we are within the view? We use this. So I type this there, and that's that's passing a reference to the object that is created from this class as a template. And now action button will um, hello button here, J button will permit that. And all hello button knows is that the thing we pass in is going to have this method action perform. So hello button can't call any other methods in this J frame if there are any. Well, there is at least a constructor, and of course there are other methods in, in J frame. It can't call any of those. It doesn't even know that this is a J frame. All it knows is it's a class that implements action listener, and it's therefore got this method. And it's, the, it's this method that J button will call when the user clicks the button. So we say that the hello button will fire an event. So when you click it, we, we say that it fires an event and it then notifies the listener or, or the listeners, or you could call them observers. And w when we say it notifies, notifies the listener, what we actually mean is it calls some method that the listener has specified by the in interface that the listener implements. So um, in here, we can put some code that we want to run. Let's just put a sys out in here to keep things simple. And I'll say, hello there, uh, exclamation mark. And now if you run this and I, I click the button, then we're going to see hello there. And I can click it again and again. It's not like a one shot thing. You can, you can keep clicking it. And you could, have, you could add lots of action listeners if you want to. We've just got one, but you could have lots of them. Now you'll also notice that this action perform method is passed some data by the button and uh, this is actually an object of type action event. Let's call it E 
for short. And it, the objects that are passed to these methods that a um, some kind of listener interface specifies, those objects are usually called events. It's just a kind of custom terminology. There's nothing really special about them. They're just objects, and the purpose of them is to contain data. So as an example here, let's supposing you've got a bunch of buttons and you want to know which ones clicked. So you could have added this, this um, view as a listener to lots of buttons by doing this with different buttons. How do you know which one's being clicked in that case? And the answer is, uh, well, one answer is you can use this event because the data that the button passes to this method in the form of this event includes a reference to the button that generated it. So we can say J button source, let's call it equals E dot get source. And uh, that returns an object, I believe. Let's have a look. Yeah, it returns an object. So we have to cast it to the right type because although the, the return type is an object, the actual object that will be returned is actually a J button. And so we can actually cast it to the right type so that this variable can then refer to it. It is actually a J button object. It's just that it's being returned as an object. And if you want more info on that, check out the probably the tutorial on polymorphism or uh, the tutorial on upcasting and downcasting in my Java 4 Complete Beginners series. So we've got the button there. And now we can put in a check. We could say if source equals equals, so we're doing a test, check that if it, if it is equal to this particular button, the hello button, and only then do we do hello there. And uh, let's put the bracket in there. And otherwise, we haven't got any more buttons here at the moment. Otherwise, uh, it will be some other button. So let's say sys out some other button. So that's not going to be called because we've only got one button here. But let's just run this and click. And we see that hello there is coming out. So let's, so the, the basic idea is, I mean, the fact that there's a source here, that's a specific thing to do with swing. But the general idea of passing a, what we call an event object which can just be some type you made up to this method in your listener interface, that's part of the observer pattern, or it's uh, part of the interpretation of it, at least. Let's have another button in here. Let's have a private J button goodbye button like this. And I'll say goodbye button equals new J button goodbye and to keep things uh, a bit more consistent let's change this to hello now to add the button here I have to do some swing specific stuff which is quite tedious I'm just going to copy all this stuff and paste it down here and this is kind of the form that I need to fill out that I was talking about to say where the button should go and I'm just going to change, uh, I think, that I want. In fact, I missed some um, quite important stuff out here. Let's change this. What I need to do is just say where the button should be located. And I actually meant to fill out this stuff, grid X, because um, this grid bug layout, you don't need to know this. Um, this is not part of the observer pattern in any way. But, um, uh, this is this is something that we need to fill in to specify where our control is going to go in in swing. So let's just try that and see see if that works. So now I want to add another button, a goodbye button, which is the point of doing that. So let's say here, yeah, goodbye. I filled out the form that says where it should go, probably wrongly, but we'll try it. There we go. It has appeared. That's good. Um, so now we've got two buttons. And I could also add the same listener to my other button. So I could say goodbye button dot add action listener this. 
so we've got um, the same listener to the goodbye button and now now we know that um, now in here we could use the source to find out which button has been clicked so now if I run this now if I click hello it says hello there if I click goodbye it says some other button so that's one particular example of passing data with an event type object to your method that's run in your observer your listener when the event occurs now I just want to show you one more thing here that's really useful to know and to understand the next bit you have to get your head around anonymous classes although typing out the code here would be certainly a step towards understanding anonymous classes if you don't already understand them so I always think there's nothing wrong at all in diving in at the deep end if you uh, if you find that enjoyable let's have um, so I'll, I'll stick with this button now and I just want to show you well a couple of things one thing I want to demonstrate is that you can in this case because we've got an add action listener it's called add rather than set that implies that the button is maintaining a list of listeners and it's going to notify each listener when it's clicked if it was called set I would suspect that there was it was there was only one listener and setting it was setting that unique listener but because it's called add I think okay there's got to be a list of them so um, let's add another listener uh, to this goodbye button let's say goodbye button dot add action listener and this time I'm going to use an anonymous class and the way an anonymous class works um, well I won't go over it here because I already have a free tutorial on that in Java for complete beginners but I'm just going to show you what you have to type and if you want to learn this a, a great way to learn it is just to type it and you'll get used to it so within the brackets of um, of this method here I'm going to say new action listener and round brackets and this bit looks as though we were declaring a object but um, it's actually an interface sorry that bit looks as though we are instantiating an object I should say creating an object from a class but it's actually an interface and to complete this I open a curly bracket there hit return eclipse has put the closing curly bracket in and there's the closing round whoops <laughs> there's the closing round bracket that corresponds to this round bracket here I put the semicolon in and let's just click this error and go to add unimplemented methods and I can implement my class my action perform method here so this is an anonymous class syntax which isn't specific to the observer method it's just a facet of the Java language which you can look into more separately if you want to and now let's put in here sysal sorry to see you go and now so what this is is it's a quick way a quick alternative to creating a little class that implements the action listener interface called an anonymous class because it hasn't gotten it's not named and we can immediately pass that in where we actually create it so it's an alternative to going to the trouble of having um, some big class like this implement action listener you can have one anonymous class that could be specific for this particular subject this particular button and then if we if we run this now if I click uh, hello it's going to say hello there and if I click goodbye we see that both observers are notified when the event is fired in the button so that's it for this tutorial this code will be on caveofprogramming.com and in the next tutorial we're going to look at implementing the whole structure of the observer pattern for ourselves rather than just using an existing example of it so until then happy coding